Hello one and all, happy new year. Uh, welcome to another Pink and Match Day vlog. These are coming out of your ears at the moment, as is the festive schedule in this country. But there we go, Norwich City, of course, welcome Crystal Palace to Carrow Road today, which is uh, going to be an interesting game for, for a magnitude of reasons, especially given where Norwich City find themselves currently in the Premier League, of course, uh, rooted bottom of the table. Uh, a win here is a necessity, really, given um, the circumstances, Aston Villa won earlier today, uh, as, as I record this, um, Southampton are beating Tottenham, of course that could, that could all change. So it does, it does feel like this is fairly pivotal just to keep them within um, a distance that is possible to close as opposed to perhaps where they've been. But no easy feat, Crystal Palace of course, uh, another one of those counter-attacking sides uh, with some unbelievable talent, Wilfred Zaha, we all saw the goal that Jordan Ayew scored the other day, um, unbelievable individual effort, Luka Mijovic is, is handy as well, Max Meyer I, I really like, so they've got plenty of, of, of good players in there for Norwich City today, um, this is definitely one that you can categorise as a, as a must win, so it's going to be interesting to see how it transpires, um, and of course you'll be able to follow it with me uh, throughout my day, it's, it's about it's just after half three, so we've got about two hours to go till kick off. Um, always interesting night games, going to be interesting to see what the atmosphere is like today. Hopefully, we're we're not talking about another VAR controversy, but given uh, and I'm sure you've all seen the the footage of the Aston Villa goal that was ruled offside. Um, I think it was Wesley where they've literally drawn lines for me his his heel. Hopefully, we have none of that today. But let's uh, let's go to Carrow Road and let's uh, see what's going on. Years, another match day at Carrow Road. Feels like uh, about 10 minutes since we were here last. Uh, the floodlights are on, as you can see. Lots of people milling about earlier, early doors. Uh, I've just seen a, a coach as well. I'm not sure if that's the Norwich coach or the Palace coach, but that should be making his way around the corner where you may be able to see in the distance that a group of people are waiting to uh, see their various favourite players, icons, heroes get off the bus, respectively. Here we go then. And as ever, the front of the match day program brilliantly designed two classic kits through the side. Todd Campbell in that uh, classic Coleman's Norwich kit. Yellow shorts, yellow socks, full yellow. But a distinct lack of green on that one. And then Wilfred Zaha, of course, in a, in a classic Palace shirt that is uh, quite nice as well, you'd have to say. So that's the front of today's match day program. Uh, and then on the back, of course, all the teams as well. An interesting point about uh, the VAR assistant that you can see there, uh, Jared Gillett, uh, Gillett, Gillett uh, I think is, is how you say that. He's the Australian referee who was mic'd up in the A-League. You may have watched that, uh, uh, that, that video where he went and consulted VAR. Well, he is on VAR tonight. It's not Kevin Friend who's the referee, it is Jonathan Moss. So, uh, and there is the back of the programme.
outside of Carrow Road, usual uh, territory uh, it seems to get into Carrow Road. Nice City 1-0 up, uh, Tom Campbell in the opening five minutes and probably one of the most bizarre goal celebrations I've ever seen from a, a crowd of people at a football match. It was, it was very muted, it seemed everyone that was waiting for, uh, for VAR to, to rule Campbell offside. I must admit, all of us up here in, in the press box uh, thought he was offside. Replay showed he was uh, clearly onside and the goal stood, but very muted. Uh, I suppose that's the effect of, of VAR that, that perhaps we haven't discussed um, in, in recent weeks up to Saturday's events. It was probably always going to happen that the next goal scored here was going to be was going to be met with a little bit of trepidation. Um, but it is stand. Norwich won the lap. They've created some good chances as well. Um, Puki went close towards the end of the half as well as uh, Max Aaron's drilling across uh, towards the back post, but no one could convert. And uh, Crystal Palace have probed. They've, they've had chances. Mirovojevic had a shot very early on, which deflected wide of the post. Um, a Zimmerman slip almost allowed uh, Jero Vivald to uh, go, go through on goal. His cutback found, eventually found James McArthur, and it was a stunning block by Zimmerman who, who made amends for um, the error. And, and beyond that, really, it's, it's been uh, an interesting game. Norris probably edged it, I would say, in, in terms of dominance. They've, they've looked a threat every time they've gone forward, but. It has ebbed and flowed. Um, Palace perhaps haven't really created anything of note beyond uh, the, the block that I was talking about, probably their best chance. Um, and, and Norwich really now need to push on and get that second goal where in previous weeks they failed to do so. And if they can do that, then this is a weary looking Palace side. But we said that about Sheffield United and Wolves, didn't we? So they've got to expect a response. I'm seeing uh, Fiatte go through his his pace is here at uh, Palace Coast so expect him to come on into midfield and that would uh, offer them another dimension it's going to be about how Norwich respond and how well they can sustain the dominance and, and, and the attacks they're having when they um, Campbell have, uh, have been bright and Norwich look a little bit better off for those three changes it certainly looks to have made a, a noticeable difference in terms of the attacking phase at least um, but yeah perfectly poised as these games always are and hopefully Norwich uh, are in a position where they can extend this lead and see it out and get some points on the board in what is a crucial Premier League match, especially given the results that uh, went earlier on. Hi guys, James Michael here. Uh, thanks to Colin Staple for inviting me on to talk about today's game. Uh, again, it's sad to say that we're talking about another draw for Norwich City and not the full three points, which is very disappointing. Um, Norwich from the get-go was very, very good and a superb opening with Todd Campwell. Um, very well taken goal, very ice cool under pressure. Um, and for, for the first 45 minutes, we were absolutely dominant and absolutely superb. Um, Vrancic, Buendia, Buendia, special mention, absolutely ran the show in the middle of the park for Norris today. Played some really, really good balls. Um, Itetti as well, sort of as a, in, in that defensive midfield role, again, played absolutely brilliantly. Um, it just seems a shame that we're, we're, we're talking about only picking up a point and not picking up the full three points, which I think we, we, we fully deserved. Um, again, I think there was several opportunities for us to, to, to get ahead. Again, hitting the hitting the woodwork, um, just, just just certain things which aren't quite clicking for us at the minute, things that aren't going our way. Um, but I think there's very, very encouraging signs there. I don't think there was any red flags for me today, uh, anything major to worry about. I think there's just a small annoyance that we, we seem to be incapable at the moment of, of sort of seeing eight games when we're one ahead. Uh, I mean, I know we should have scored, uh, probably two, three. We should have been out of sight by half time. Um, but again, Hanley and Zimmerman played really, really well. Um, I think that we should take a lot of positives from this. Um, we should always make sure that we always were behind the lads for the full 90 minutes. I know there were instances where it becomes a bit frustrating for the fans, um, but again, we must stick with them through to 90 minutes. We can't sort of give up on them halfway through. But for me, it was great to see as well Adam Ida uh, getting a uh, obviously getting some minutes under his belt today, um, and I think also we have some great confidence going forward. But I, I can't help but think that this will damage the players' confidence, knowing that they were ahead for so long, so much time in that game, and we should have been out of sight. But it, unfortunately, it is what it is. Um, we've obviously got another point on the board. It doesn't really help us right now, but. You know, obviously, as, as City fans, we carry on backing the boys, and then we go ahead to and we go we look ahead to the next game. Lovely. Thanks very much, guys. Cheers. 
Welcome to Cow Road in the aftermath of Nori City's 1-1 draw with Crystal Palace on New Year's Day and uh, I think it's fair to say that is probably as disheartened, as, dis as dejected and as low as this place has been. It felt a little bit like a wake um, following the game and rightly so, Nori City conceded an 85th minute equaliser overturned by VAR, although this time thankfully for all of us it was it was decisive and it, and it was clear um, that, that Connor Wickham was, was on side by a few yards as he tapped the ball into the back of the net um, to ensure that Crystal Palace left Cow Road with a point. And once again, Norwich City are left to rue a, a first half where they probably should have killed the game off, where, where they had opportunities, they had decent passages of possession, but ultimately couldn't find that elusive second goal, which would have put this game beyond any doubt. Um, and would have given them three points and would have helped them in their quest for survival. But right now, it's fair to say it looks like Norwich's survival hopes are flatlining. Um, given the results today elsewhere, Aston Villa won, Watford won, Southampton won. Um, West Ham beat Bournemouth uh, comprehensively. And Norwich City are, are, are left sat at the bottom of the Premier League table, um, comfortably adrift from their opponents with Manchester United, Tottenham, Liverpool within their next five or six games in the Premier League. And uh, it's a concern and it feels a little bit harsh. I was stood in the press box um, as the stadium emptied as I was making my way back into the warm and a, uh, a national broadcaster said to me he's watched Norwich set on seven occasions this season and, and feels it's unlucky where they are. and. That probably is a, a neat summary for, for for where Norwich are at the moment. It has been unlucky, it has been unfortunate, but equally it just feels like within those margins, within games, they're not quite good enough to, um, to secure enough points at this level to survive. And ultimately the frustration will come with the fact that Norwich City aren't a million miles away. They, are, they aren't far away from being a competent Premier League side capable of surviving. Um, but they're just not quite close enough to it either. And we saw that today. And I have to say, I actually think Norwich have improved radically from what we saw perhaps in November and, and, and October, where they were getting beaten by teams pretty comfortably and um, weren't really putting up a, much of a fight. And defensively, they were disorganised. And I think they've improved, to be honest, in, in both phases of the play, defensively, in transition, and also going forward as well. But equally, that inability to score goals and, and score enough goals to win games and also not conceding quality chances which they are they're conceding um, good quality of chance um, to their opponents which is making life incredibly difficult for them um, and that's frustrating because this side hasn't played poorly it hasn't um, on any occasion really looked out of its depth at this level but as I say, those small margins that the side games are proving costly to the point where Norwich have led seven of the last nine Premier League games and they've taken five points from them. Um, and three of those came against Everton back in November, which of course was their last win. It's one win in 16 Premier League games for Norwich City now. And ultimately that only ends up in, only puts you in one place and that is in the Championship. And uh, it's disappointing because their approach has been different um, people have got behind it. Daniel Farker has attempted to assert a brand of football onto onto the Premier League, which has looked stylish at times, which has um, made Norwich look good at times, and they've had some wonderful spells of possession. But for me, it's both boxes where that quality just is not quite there um, as they need it to be to to um, rack up enough points to stay in this division and that's a shame because of the context I've said but last season was so unforgettable was so incredible the football they played was um, phenomenal at times and we've seen snippets of that at this level in the Premier League and look that's that's not to say that some mir some miracle won't happen and they won't survive but it would be some miracle it would be some chapter for them to right now to go on and, and stay in this division I think given that as I said, the context that I've given, the, the fact that they have won one game in 16, the fact they are cut adrift at the bottom of the Premier League, the fact 
that they are they are, have been unable to keep a clean sheet at Carroll Road all season. The fact that they've only won two games here all season. Um, Let's talk about the game then, because it was a game that Norwich City will, again, rue missed opportunities and, and rue periods in games where they were dominant and just couldn't quite take the opportunities that, that they created for themselves. Um, Crystal Palace really didn't really work to him cruel for, for a lot of the game. Um, uh, and then we've got Connor Wickham's goal. Wilfred Zaha works himself wonderfully into a one-on-one -on -one situation with Max Ahrens. Lovely bit of skill to get on the outside of him, fizz across, ball across and Connor Wickham converts of course Norwich took the lead after five minutes um, it was uh, Emmy Buendia exchange passes with, with Todd Cantwell beautifully his shot ricochets into the path of Cantwell who finishes with with some confidence past uh, Hieta in, in this down this end at the Barclay um, for Norwich to give him the lead that's his sixth goal of the season and uh, some quite some quite some emergence for him and um, no doubt if, if Norwich City do end up in the Championship, there'll be a fair few suitors for Todd Cantwell because he's, uh, he's taken to life in the Premier League absolutely superbly. And from there, Norwich dominated. Palace were passive in their defensive shape, really two banks of four, weren't really pressing. Norwich allowed them to have the ball. They looked a little bit lethargic in truth and Norwich uh, looks good value for the way they're freshening up and, and obviously made three changes uh, prior to this game. And, they buzzed around the pitch with a bit more energy than Palace. They looked a bit more of a threat and once again just couldn't find that second goal. And if they could have, once again, this is a game that you would say they would have put beyond any doubt whatsoever. Um, and they would have won, I, I think. And, and the fact is that teams are able to keep themselves within games despite being second best. We saw it with Sheffield United. We saw it with Wolves. We've seen it today here with Palace. And they did grow into things in the second half. Crystal Palace, uh, Zaha was their major outlet as, as you might expect um, and Norwich defended well against him for, for a lot of the game uh, Max Ahrens stood up to him and, and made sure that he got, he got tight enough to him that prevented Zaha from, from turning often they, they doubled up and a, a midfielder would come and slot in as well but ultimately just not quite enough um, to to win today and uh, I suppose the, perhaps the highlight is that they're unbeaten in this, uh, in this decade and this year so um, <laughs> that's a positive for you but frustrating um, disheartening feels like the beginning of what could be a very long march back to the championship now um, as I said it's, it, it would be some chapter for this, for this squad to write if they were to survive in the Premier League and I just can't quite picture them doing it um, given what I've seen in the opening half of this season but there we go We're, we get a nice break from league action now we, we all travel to Deepdale um, in the FA Cup third round um, no VAR so that's uh, <laughs> that's something to look forward to at least um, yeah happy new year to you all look no drum beating this year that's, that's what we've got to take out of uh, this game I think but uh, yeah thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll see you in Lancashire uh, for the long old trip up to Deepdale. And I must say, I, I tip my hat to any supporters who, who are going up to, to watch um, that on Saturday. So we'll see you up there.